Anderson is a happy, easygoing kid. He's three and he's just full of energy and life. But he also has a trach and he's ventilator dependent. He started out as a healthy, normal, developing baby and then at six months old they diagnosed him with um, dilated cardiomyopathy. Well he started with the heart transplant because of his heart being too big and that was the first complication. We waited for the transplant. In the process of that he needed a um, left ventricular assist device to help further his heart function um, and that was made a little bit more complicated and difficult with a uh, bacteria that he contracted Burkholderia aspatia, um, and he got that bacteria from a infected medication. In that four days that we were at Helen DeVos, he was given the colace, the uh, stool softener that was tainted. Uh, he did not show any symptoms or signs of having any kind of complications. We found out that he had been given the tainted drugs six months after. In the moment, I was angry, I was scared, I was sad. Um, you don't realize how raw you're feeling until it's done and over with, and then you have time to reflect back on it. Life after the Burkholderia sepatia has changed completely for us. He needs constant 24-hour supervision. I don't go off to work, I stay home with him, and just hanging out with him from sunup to sundown is pretty fun and not nearly as stressful. It's when you start dealing with the four-hour phone calls to figure out if he has Medicaid or there was a billing error, that's when things get stressful, that's when things get difficult. As time goes on, it gets a lot easier, but it's still, it's still hard. It still is way more than what I ever thought I was going to endure. We get some time, my husband and I, Andrew, that usually gets done in the few hours that we have before bedtime and he might not be in the house from between 7 and um, 6 but when he comes home after a long day he makes dinner because he knows that I'm still working on our med list that needed to be ordered, working on ordering his ventilator supplies. I mean he works just as hard, if not harder, right up until nurses come in at 9 o'clock and they are here throughout the entire night. That are 70s, 74s systolic um, so just as a reminder so our day starts at 9 a.m. Um, nurses leave at 9 a.m. I'm up and I've had a little time to myself and um, ready mentally to prepare for the crazy he does um, occupational therapy is designed to help him learn to use that left side my left side that's weak from that stroke that he suffered. We call it his lucky fin. Um, he just kind of holds it there and he's got some strength but it's not strong enough to um, pick up the iPad and play a game or hold a crayon or pencil and color with it. So the occupational therapy helps him with those fine motor skills, the ones that we need help developing. When we went through the transplant meeting, we were explained about how life was going to be different after transplant. This was not on the radar. This was, the vent and trach was not part of it. The kidney disease was not part of it. Dialysis wasn't part of it. Um, the only thing that I can blame it on is the Burkled area. It's not easy and it wasn't supposed to be like this and it's not fair but I wouldn't change it. This is our normal. We don't know anything different other than this. Uh, we just do a little extra. He has a few extra accessories. He has a G-tube. He has a trach. Um, we take our heart medications with us. We take our um, slew of other extra stuff, but it doesn't, doesn't hinder us in any way. It just takes us a little longer to get around. I see um, eventually him not having a trach anymore. We've already done away with the dialysis. Um, that was our biggest hurdle in the beginning. Um, the trach is coming, and then just continuing on with our transplant care will be the, the next step, but that's going to be lifelong, and that'll be fine. But uh, give it time, and we're going to be just your typical normal family.